it's time for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 120, Remain Calm, a practice to get started. The last episode, I spoke about the COVID-19, and to be clear, COVID-19 does refer to the disease. Co refers to Corona, V, virus, and D to the disease. Many of you had asked me some questions about that. And the virus that causes the disease we know now is the SARS-CoV-2, which was named by the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses. But we're seeing it as COVID. As it continues to spread, and we don't know how fast it's going to spread now that everyone's really practicing self-quarantine, which is fantastic, because it really helps our medical systems uh, be able to deal with the people that really need care. And it really helps. It's, it's our way of contributing. But at the same time, our medical and governmental officials are working to limit the spread. And the problem we're having is, I believe, it's social media. It's doing what it does best to sensationalize and create panic. And it's, it's doing that. It's changing the financial markets and everything. That's not to say that we don't have this as a problem. There's a virus that is out there, of course. But to really create the panic in the minds of other people is really unacceptable, especially when they don't really have knowledge of medicine. You know, after all, they're doing journalism and uh, multimedia. So we want to really go to the CDC uh, to get our information. Because this panic really ruins the minds and hearts of everyone. It really creates uh, a very cloudy existence. So it's important that we don't get sucked into it and maintain the social distancing from the media in addition to what we're being told if the sources are media-based. Again, the CDC is the best place to get your facts, and I just thought it was important to start this episode with this kind of discussion. Therefore, if I were to make a suggestion, no more than 15 minutes per day of media input. Really, that's it, period. <laughs> End of story. During other parts of the day, pay attention to containing your mind so that you can be aware, but not be driven by fear. There's nothing wrong with being aware of what's going on, but the drive for fear is what's going to really affect our own immune systems and cause unnecessary disease. The next four or five episodes, I'm going to incorporate separate, uh, special practices that I've created for you, your family, your friends, and the community as a whole, and that you may find would maybe be beneficial. I hope you'll find them useful. I put them together and I'm going to be delivering them all at once. And this way everyone can, you know, take the time that you're home now to in go, in go inverted, introspective. This is a time for all of us to come together as a whole and as a community and as a time to work with ourselves so that we could really transform ourselves into a different dimension. In today's episode, the practice will focus on containing our energy. It can be used to decrease anxiety and easy to help us keep our mind protected and contained. The practice is a simple posture that I have found to deliver dramatic benefits. The posture that we're going to use for this practice is called the crocodile pose, and you can look that up on the internet if you don't know what that is, but I'll also describe it. And if you take yoga, or a yoga class, you'll see that people, uh, usually instructors, will start with a crocodile pose to really help contain and ground the energy before beginning the class. I'll explain how to do it, and I'll guide you through it, of course. And before getting started, a few words that will give you a background. The pose where you're face down facilitates the diaphragmatic breathing to automatically happen. Because when the arms are above your head, the chest does remain immobile. And this is a benefit because it allows you to release all of your tension. And where you hold most tension is in your lower back and the abdominal region. 
And when we put our belly and face to the ground, it helps us contain the energy of our mind. So we feel less exposed and vulnerable. I use the practice every morning and evening. When I, when I wake up, I do the practice. And before retiring, I do the practice. In the crocodile pose, you'll be practicing a form of breathing that will be used for any type of meditation that you would engage in, which feels both calming and empowering. So let's begin. To begin, rest on your abdomen with your arms folded and your hands resting on the opposite elbows on the floor above your head. Draw the elbows in so slightly to lift the chest off the floor. Many find this difficult, so if you take a cushion or a rolled blanket above your chest, it'll help prop it up. I happen to use a cushion that props my chest up. Now bow your head so that your forehead rests simply on your forearms. And this takes the pressure off the neck and the upper back, and the arms for that matter, which most people find to be very comfortable. So again, let's prop up the chest. You can do that with a cushion or you can do that with a folded blanket, whatever is best for you. You just want to feel comfortable. This position is called the crocodile pose for those that take yoga classes, as I mentioned, and it allows you to release all of your tension because it puts your belly and face to the ground. And it's very, very useful in calming and containing an action, you know, an anxious mind, allowing the person to feel less exposed and vulnerable. And again, make any adjustments that you need, but make sure that the abdomen rests fully on the floor and the upper chest is slightly elevated. And most of your weight will rest on in the abdominal area and the lower rib cage. Now close your eyes and take several breaths. I will cue you after about a minute or so. While you're in this position, allow your mind to focus on just breathing. Not in any particular way, just breathe and let the floor support your entire abdominal region. Inhaling and exhaling, let the inhalation flow into the exhalation with little to no pause. You're now inhaling and exhaling smoothly and rhythmically. And just allowing the body to relax into the floor and rest there for a few moments. Feeling the rise of the back as you inhale and the fall of the back as you exhale. And if you don't feel that, that's okay too. But you do know as you inhale, you're feeling the belly, the abdominal area press against the floor. And as you exhale, you feel that that changes. And just be aware. Now we'll begin moving our attention through the body and we'll do this together. As you continue breathing rhythmically, smoothly, bring your attention to your face and relax the face. Softening your eyes, your nose, cheeks and mouth. Moving down and relaxing your neck and shoulders. Your upper back between the shoulder blades. Your lower back. Abdominal and pelvic area. Your legs and feet. And feel as though you're breathing as if your whole body is breathing. Just allow the fullness of your body to relax into the floor and let the floor support you, meeting you. Now move your attention back up and bring your attention to your mid back and the awareness of your breathing at that mid-back area. 
Feel the upper back rise as you inhale and lower as you exhale. At the same time, you'll feel your belly press into the floor as you inhale, as the back raises with each inhale. And then as, it, as you exhale, you'll feel the belly relax into the floor and the back will come down to the floor. So on inhale, the belly presses into the floor and as exhale, you'll feel it release. And this is what is called diaphragmatic breathing. And it's the key note for relaxing the body, mind, and soul. In other words, relaxing to your core. This is one of our fundamental foundational exercises in order to get into a relaxed mode. And as I term it, relax to the core. Stay in this position for as long as you like without falling asleep. And if you do this each morning before getting out of bed and each night before going to sleep or falling asleep, you can actually contain your mind so that anxiety will not take over or doesn't take over. So just allow yourself to breathe here for a few more moments, inhaling and exhaling with little to no pause between breaths just feeling the rise and fall of the abdominal area into the floor as well as the back rising and falling. I like to do this practice between five and 10 minutes as I mentioned before in the AM and PM. And sometimes even in the middle of the day, now that we're all at home and we have more time, you could make it a point to do this at midday. Anytime you feel out of sorts, instead of going onto multimedia, bring yourself down to the floor or on your bed and roll over onto your belly, place your arms over your head and just practice this for a while. To get out of this practice, roll onto your back and rest a moment. You can either get up or go to sleep. And that concludes the practice. You can extend it for as long or as short as you like. And what we want to really think about here is we really want to use this time of us all coming together. We're actually pulling together during this I would like to say it's more of a crisis than I'd, I'd like to have us all experience, but let's all come together and we want to move our way. We don't want to have lack of hope. Lack of hope is what's going to create the problem and that's why I'm encouraging all of you, please step away from social media for a while. It's not really made to keep you in a place of uh, hope and trust and all of those types of things. It induces fear. So pay attention to that. And things will happen because we're going to become inspired. We're going to come together as a group and as a community. Please invite others to the community that you might think might want any of these practices. Everyone's welcome. And it's the best way that I can serve during this time with my skills and what I've been doing. But as I always say, do your own research. See if this works. See if it works, as I said, to really do this practice and let me know. If you know someone that needs to know about this, please just pass on the practice to them. We do know that the Susan Taylor podcast does come out every week and is available on SusanTaylor.org, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and other podcast platforms. You can join me and George. Uh, behind the scenes because we're doing that with question and answer and also with commentary that may support you during this time. And visit SusanTaylor.org for more information. If you'd like to hear something more on this topic or community or for the community or the questions or anything, please let me know. And until next time, as always, remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment.